Thank you. Our next question comes from Zach Aubert with Launchpad News. Yes, Zachary Aubert with TLPnetwork.com, Launchpad News. First, congratulations on such an incredible mission, and thank you for the great live tracker and cameras. It really felt like we all went back to the moon together, which is awesome because space is better together and the views were expiring. Is there any time-sensitive instruments or equipment that are on Orion that need to be offloaded quickly? We know there's a more set timeline for crews, but anything for the cargo or science as we see during missions coming back from the ISS? And for Administrator Nelson, over the last three weeks, for the first time in 50 years, we could look to the moon and say, we can go there. There's a new Artemis generation that's making a decision on what their future would look like. Uh, Administrator, what encouragement or inspiration would you say to this new generation on why they should consider the space industry as part of their future? Thank you. Yeah, Zach, uh, thank you for the time, uh, the question on time-sensitive uh, instruments and payloads. Um, we do have a number of dosimeters on board the uh, the spacecraft, both active and passive. Um, there are, uh, there's also one um, bio-experiment payload that is on board that it contains a number of organisms, uh, yeast and fungus and, and some other, other uh, organisms that um, serve as basically an analog to help us understand um, uh, radiation exposure. So we've got the bioexperiment samples in the, uh, in the cockpit of Orion. We've got the, uh, the mare uh, uh, mannequin torsos that uh, one had a radiation vest on, one did not, uh, and we'll get baseline data from that. And then uh, there are other dosimeters in the cabin. So those um, will be removed as soon as we, as we can once we get the vehicle back to San Diego. Um, simply to basically stop the clock on those, um, and it makes it more difficult in, in terms of understanding um, what the results are the longer that they're sitting here on Earth and there is some background radiation, there is some background um, uh, decay in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the experiments themselves. Uh, so uh, that, that will uh, be done to stop the clock, but um, none of those, I would say, are, are kind of um, high priority in terms of the... Uh, the uh, uh, overall processing of the vehicle, we just we just know we're going to get those off the vehicle, and there's a plan to do that. The essence of your question was, how do we get the younger generation to buy in to the Artemis program? And um, I would invite you uh, to come with me to any NASA center and talk to our interns. We hire a bunch of college interns. We're going to hire more, by the way. We're getting that in the budget. Uh, you will come away from that conversation so pumped uh, because those students will pump you up with their excitement about what they're doing and how they're contributing. I can't help but remember in the old days, in the Apollo program, uh, the story was told about a ditch digger at the Kennedy Space Center, and a reporter went over to him and said, describe your job. He says, I am helping to put a man on the moon. I think you will see that same kind of excitement and dedication uh, in the eyes and the speech of our young generation. Now, certainly with the success of this first Artemis mission, that is the telling of a story that has a plan uh, to going further out into the universe. And uh, that in and of itself is an exciting story.